We're going to continue our team coverage right now with a look at some of the political fallout from the indictment of the former president. Joining me now from Punchbowl News, congressional reporter Max Cohen. Max, thanks for joining us this morning. You know, when, when you hear uh, what's happening in New York right now uh, and, and you see the coverage yesterday, the wall-to-wall -wall coverage of, of every step of the process, uh, you know, one, this definitely feeds into to President Trump's game plan here of getting as much attention as possible. What does it mean in the big picture politically? Certainly, I think that's a great point. He's running for the Republican nomination for president currently, and I think this will rally around the Republican base around the former president. We've seen him actually gain in the primary polls in the past couple of weeks as this media storm has gone on, and that's actually hurt Ron DeSantis's poll numbers, who's considered his number one challenger at the moment. And I will add that House Republicans who've stood by President Trump throughout his presidency and the post-presidency period are also expected to stand by him. We'll see some of those members in New York potentially today and definitely at the Mar-a-Lago speech Trump is expected to give after he leaves New York. You, and you're right. You're going to see some of those folks this morning, even before we see President Trump, perhaps, because there is a rally that's going to be happening outside of the courthouse with some of his most ardent report, uh, supporters. Uh, what about the, the other folks who went to bat for him during the elections in the past as far as members of Congress? Is that split more now than it was in 2020 or, or not? Does this actually help to unify, perhaps, the party? I think it's a good question. We have some supporters uh, in Congress certainly are less willing to speak out, I'd say. Some people who voted for him in 2020 and supported him publicly, they don't necessarily want to be associated with this right now as the primary plays out. But I think if you look at the voters and not the elected officials, many GOP-based voters are still united behind Trump. And I think this could, in fact, uh, significantly increase his hold on the party. But there are some elected officials, some more moderate Republicans, who, when asked about this situation, prefer not to comment. Um, some of the supporters, of course, will stick by him, call this a politically motivated prosecution, but others are staying on the sidelines for now, seeing how this plays out. One thing we do expect, Max, uh, if a non-guilty plea, which we expect to, to come for the president today, uh, follows through along with uh, any appeals, any questions, uh, you know, it, you expect his attorneys to try to delay this process as long as possible. So how does that play into the support game if this is something who obviously will not be wrapped up today? It could be months. It could be a year down the road. How does that impact uh, what happens with the, the former president and his support in Congress and with voters? Yeah, look, the longer this process plays out, as you noted in the opening, the longer Trump's name is in the headlines. That has been his strategy for decades now, is keep his name relevant, keep his name ID high. Voters are, will be engaged. Voters will see Trump's name. And I think from his support, a key part of Trump's message is that the political establishment, that prosecutors, that government is out to get him. If he can keep his name in the headlines, I think that will help him among Republican voters who see government is weaponized against fellow conservatives. That will help him in the primary. The real question is, if he makes it through the primary, how does that impact him in the general election? That's a different question. Sure. I, you know, one of the things that we've heard from supporters of, of Republican candidates not named Donald Trump uh, is how do you keep this guy out of the headlines, right? I mean, he's getting so much free publicity from every step of the way. So the others who have either already announced their candidacy for president or may be waiting to announce their candidacy, what does this do for them? How do they counter these moves when you see Donald Trump getting free publicity every minute of the day? It's an incredibly tricky situation. We saw Ron DeSantis initially kind of crack a joke about the situation about Trump's indictment with payments to, to a porn star, and he said, I don't really know that situation. But at the same time, he's attacked for, by Republican voters for not sticking up enough for the president. So it's a very tricky step they have to go through here. Any Republican voter or, who sees a presidential candidate not sticking up for Trump, who's still widely revered in the party, can face criticism. But at the same time, these Republican candidates, their goal is to beat Trump. So on one hand, you have to draw a distinction. On the other hand, they have to be seen as sticking up for Trump, and many of them have condemned uh, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's investigation, as voters want them to do. All right. Today, the focus, though, on lower Manhattan, and that process all gets underway in just a couple of hours. Punchball News congressional reporter Max Cohen. Thanks, Max. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you.